Okay, next is public expression, and we have uh, Skip Skinner here to uh, present an award. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I appreciate the opportunity to speak before you, the members of, of, the, of the board, Mr. Carter. Um, this is a this this happens to coincide with this month happens to coincide with the 50th anniversary. I'd like, I'd like Larry Mosley to uh, step to the podium with me. This this month happens to coincide as the 50th anniversary month, the first time the Wisco board met as a group to talk about regional strategies for economic development and, and, and what have you. And of course, I'm, I'm recognized Mr. Williams there as a, as, a, as a former board member, but for the purpose of this award, I would like to ask Mr. Carter to step to the podium down here with me right now. So. Mark Carter is also a uh, is a is a former Little Wisco board member, and I have been negligent since his um, uh, his absence from the uh, from the Little Wisco board by not giving him proper re re recognition, which is what we try to do to all uh, Little Wisco board members. And I've got a, I've got a plaque that, that I'd like to present to him tonight. Presented to Mark Allen Carter in grateful recognition of his service to the Little Wisco Board of Directors and for his distinct vision and leadership, his numerous contributions to regional progress, and for his wise counsel during critical times from, not, from 2004 and 2014. So anyway, I want to thank you so much for being part of the surprise. <laughs> <laughs> we want to, I wanted to surprise Mark with this tonight because he's a, uh, it's a well deserved recognition and, and personally for me it was some challenging times when I first joined the, uh, joined the staff again as the executive director and, and, and Mark provided some wise counsel and leadership especially to me and that's why I wanted to take some time tonight and come down and, and recognize him and again thank him for his, his service to me and to the greater region. So. Thank you Jesus. I'd just like to say this certainly comes as, as a surprise, and I'm, I'm very grateful, Skip, and certainly appreciate you taking the time to do this. Sure, but you, sure. It certainly was not necessary. Absolutely. Thank I'm you so much. Time. And we'll come back and have that discussion about economic development at some other point. So. <laughs> Can I ask Mr. Skinner a question there? I was going to ask Mr. Skinner if he was on that first board. <laughs> no, not that first board. <laughs> Close. Uh, all day long I've been wearing a Lena Wisco jacket that you gave me 18 years ago and I've worn it every year since that. It's my favorite jacket. But it's beginning to wear out. <laughs> there are any change. I don't want a plaque. I'd rather really have a jacket. We'll, we'll, we'll see if I can find one in the archives. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Anyone else uh, doing public expression? Good evening. I don't really have a speech prepared or anything. Um, I do get a call from some of the paraprofessionals and uh, assistants and uh, support staff, and they're asking that uh, you look at their salaries and their salary scale. Uh, the majority of them top out at 14 years, and see they still have to work years and years and years after that to be able to retire. So they just ask that while you're doing your budget to look at their uh, salaries and uh, maybe up the scale a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, next uh, is the reports. Mr. Carter has uh, the next five, so we'll let you do them all one time. Okay. Uh, as most of you probably are aware, the General Assembly has passed the state budget and it was passed with House Bill 1400, which is a compromised version for the 1516 budget. Uh, the budget includes a hundred, these are a couple of things I guess that are important to public education. The uh, budget includes 193 million for teacher, for the teacher retirement fund and hopefully this will um, allow a decrease in the rate that the employer has to pay or, or put up for the 15-16 budget and that should help our local budget so we're, we're very appreciative for that. 
In addition, there is 52.8 million for the state share of a 1.5% salary increase for funded SOQ instructional and support positions. So those are, the, I guess, the two of the highlights from the, the budget that affect public education, and, and both of them are, are extremely positive. So we're very thankful for that. Of course, we certainly would like to sing the 1.5% increase um, for our uh, instructional and support positions to have been, been more than that, but we're very thankful for that because we certainly went for a period of time where they didn't receive any raise at all. Also, you have um, Superintendent's Memo 4615 uh, talks about the amendments, and of course, there's an attachment that goes with that. We can provide that for you. Uh, just on the school calendars, you're all well aware we've missed 18 full days of school and 10 days we've had two hour delays. We have a superintendent's memo from the state superintendent reminding us of the requirements for instructional time in the school year. And according to the Code of Virginia and the standards of accreditation, we are required to provide instruction for a minimum of 180 days or 990 clock hours. So we do have to provide proof of that. Uh, of course, uh, if we have time built into the schedule, school divisions can use that time that exceeds the 990 clock hours, but we do have to do that. Of course, at this point, later in the, on the agenda, <coughs> excuse me, later on in the agenda, you'll have to take action on that, but I just want you to be aware um, that we have missed 18 full days and had 10 two-hour delays. The next item is the um, 2015 Southwest Region Spring Forum. That'll be held on April the 13th at Carroll County High School our Carroll County Public Schools, and, and uh, that will be at Carroll County High School. And the registration for that for board members is March the 23rd. So any board member that's interested in, att in attending will need to let us know so that we can get you registered prior to that. Each board member that attends will receive three academy po points for that, uh, for the BSBA credit, uh, academy points. The advanced ed has been rescheduled, our external visit for April the 19th through the 22nd. And you have a copy of that schedule in your packet. So that uh, will uh, be the schedule that we'll follow unless there's any changes. If there is, we'll let you know. Next on the agenda is the um, 8.8 .8 million grant to end uh, child hunger in Virginia. And Governor McCulloch and First Lady Dorothy McCulloch they announced on March the 2nd that Virginia had been awarded $8.8 .8 million in federal grant for an innovative project that's designed to help end childhood hunger in the Commonwealth. And then yesterday, the governor and the first lady, along with the Secretary of Agriculture, uh, announced the divisions that would be receiving the um, grant. And uh, the school divisions that will receive the grant are Bristol City, Buchanan County, Galax City, Grayson County, Lee County, Richmond City, Scott County, and Smith County. And these were uh, selected based on the percentage of students that were eligible for free and reduced lunch and on state accreditation status. The enrollment report for the month of February stands at 3,122 students. That's down eight students from the previous month, and it's down 75 students from this same period last year. And then financial, I guess, goes to the next chart. Good evening. This is a summary of our financial activity for the month of February. Our state revenues totaled $2,327,674.77. Federal revenues and reimbursements totaled $8,185.80. And insurance revenues were $5,053.19. For total revenues of $2,340,913.76. Our the percentage of revenues that we have received as of February 28th is 52.8%. Our expenditures for the month of February, our general fund payroll and accounts payable totaled $2,508,103.60. Total 
Title I payroll and accounts payable total $130,714.21. Head Start payroll was $87,278.81. And insurance payments total $302,758.92. Our expenditures for the month were $3,028,855.54. Through February 28th, we had used 50.71% of our appropriations for the year. Any questions? Yeah, I've got a question. Uh, Denise, on uh, the insurance fund? Yes. On the deposits? Yes. <laughs> Because we were out so much in February, I was not able to deposit um, until 1st of March. So okay. March well, will okay. be quite sizable. I noticed that that was quite down to what it normally is. It is. just curious. Thank you. Anyone else? <coughs> Thank you. Okay, next is the action agenda items. First is uh, consider approval of the Virginia School Board Association policy updates. Ms. Adam. Good evening. You were provided in your packet the red line uh, documents which uh, indicates the underline was for new and the cross out was for delete or the strikeout. So, if you have any questions or concerns, I'd like to also point out that uh, ICID, which was school year, school day, that mistake in that first paragraph came down from the SBA, and it will probably be, we'll probably be seeing it again as they correct it. So I ask that to uh, consider adoption of these policy updates presented in February. Most of them were just uh, updated, uh, text of the policy was reformatted, nothing new. Any questions, concerns? I make a motion to accept it. I have a motion to second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you, Ms. Evans. Thank you. Okay, next is consider approval of the uh, Put Kids First Resolution, Mr. Carter. As the board recalls last month, uh, Ms. Johnson uh, appeared before the board and um, provided the board with a copy of this resolution and asked that we consider it. And this is a joint uh, venture between the Virginia Education Association and the Virginia Parent Teacher Association uh, because they believe that the Commonwealth has no more precious resource than its children and uh, they're asking that we join the campaign to mobilize Virginians to, to demand that Virginians, uh, Virginia's elected state officials place the need of Virginia's children's and public schools first. Um, therefore, they're organizing uh, and supporting a statewide campaign and a rally on April the 18th uh, at 3 p.m. Uh, on the state capitol in Richmond and they have a resolution asking the board to consider that in support of this rally at the state capitol and, and put kids first. I make that motion. Okay, I have a motion, I have a second. Second. I have a motion, second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. <coughs> Next is to consider approval of the revisions to the 2014-2015 school calendar. Snowmake up days, Mr. Carter. I provided for you in your packet a copy of the 2014-15 school calendar, and that, that's our current calendar, but certainly didn't. Uh, this calendar doesn't take into consideration the 18 snow days and the 10 two-hour delays uh, that we've had. So in order to meet the uh, state's instructional time requirements, uh, the board will need to consider um, revising the school calendar, and you have like eight different scenarios uh, in front of you. Uh, four of those scenarios are based on a regular school day. Four of those scenarios are based on an extended school day. <clears throat> Excuse me, we figured the extended school day 
with five minutes added to each period. So that's an additional 35 minutes a day if the board wanted to consider extending the school day to make up some of those clock hours. At this point, we're probably uh, going to be looking at, at meeting the 990 clock hour requirement rather than the 180 instructional day requirement. Uh, it's going to be almost impossible with um, that many days absent to meet the uh, 180 instructional day. So we're looking at trying to meet the 990 clock hour requirement to satisfy the state's uh, instructional hours requirement. But anyway, um, we have those eight calendars and if you look at the green boxes that shows you the SOL testing, possible SOL testing windows. <clears throat> the SOL testing window must open on a Monday and must close on a Friday and it must be four weeks in length. The gold box on your um, schedule shows you the exam days. There's be four days scheduled for exams and the L and the last box simply stands for the last day of school. I guess that's his discussion. <laughs> you want a motion? <clears throat> we'll take a motion, yeah. Well, I'm going to make a motion that we accept um, Schedule 2, which keeps us on regular schedule, still gives us two days off for spring break. Um, SOL window starting on May 11th, ending on June 5th, and the last day of school, June 11th. I'll second that motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, Opposed? Uh, <clears throat> motion carries. Number two. And also, that's uh, only 175 days instead of 180. <clears throat> Since we already passed it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You're a little late, Jeremy. <laughs> but it does meet the instruction. It meets the <laughs> Okay, next is uh, consider approval to renew the insurance coverage for the 2015 2016 school year. All policies except health insurance. Uh, Ms. Lambert and Mr. Carter. Um, Mr. Yes. last month. <laughs> As we discussed last month, we were supposed to have um, an engineer come down from the from Vanco Insurance and give us a list of recommendations um, for um, scheduled maintenance upgrade um, and to help keep our insurance costs low. But due to the weather we've experienced over the last month, he was not able to complete that. So we are awaiting his second visit and his recommendations. And at that point, when he's finished with that, Vico will give us some numbers to work with and look at for budget purposes. And whether we want to renew or put it out for bid. He first. is scheduled to be here this Thursday. Um, I'm not sure exactly how long it will take him to complete it. I doubt that he can complete what he's planning on doing in one trip. Uh, but after Thursday, uh, we should have some idea of, of how long it will take and how many visits they will possibly make and um, their recommendations, but VACO is reluctant to give us a figure until after they do this inspection. So we would actually recommend that the board table this again until next month until we get some figures from VACO. Do you have any ballpark figures about what kind of damage the last system did to us? Just ballpark. Dollar wise, I no sir, I do not. Probably a good thing. Actually, you it's probably a good thing you didn't come when we had all the leaks. <laughs> Actually, we were very fortunate to be honest with you. I mean, we, we certainly had some some issues here and there, but, but compared to what uh, the damages that a lot of folks suffered, we were very fortunate as a school system. When when do the policies expire? Not until June thirtieth. June thirtieth. And they realized we were under a crunch for budget purposes. So I feel like they'll expedite it once they have the engineer's recommendations in front of them. I'll make a motion to table it. Okay, have a motion to table. Have a second. Second. Have a motion, second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, next is uh, consider approval of carpentry class at Lee County Career 
Technical Center for the 2015 and 2016 school year. Mr. Carter. Well, as the board recalls, back in uh, November, the advisory council met at the uh, Career and Technical Center, and of course, they have um, recommended, and, and one area they addressed certainly was carpentry, and they've recommended that the board consider um, placing a carpentry class back at the vocational school in lieu of the uh, building trades class that, that, that was there. And, of course, uh, we have been unable to find anyone certified for building trades, but we probably can find someone that we can get certified for carpentry easier. And uh, the um, advisory committee all signed a letter and they're um, recommending and requesting that, that we consider um, support and approve and reinstate that carpentry class. Uh, we have had carpentry to a career and technical center before, but it's been several years ago because it actually kind of all merged into the um, building trades class, but they're asking that we reconsider uh, reinstating a carpentry class. Okay, I have a motion to approve the uh, carpentry class. Excuse me, a question. Are you asking for a motion to approve the class or are you asking for a motion to consider approving? Well, uh, it says approve on here. Consider approve. Mr. Chairman, I'll comment. Go ahead. No, I, I certainly, I think this board is supportive of vocational school. I think our record speaks for itself, and I'm, I'm offering for, uh, for any classes over there that our students can use to better themselves for, uh, for life after school. One of the reasons we uh, <coughs> had issues with this before, other than funding, was the lack of interest, and um, I, I would like to maybe. Um, if Mr. Carter could maybe get in a, in a kind of a ballpark figure on how many people would be interested in enrolling in that class where it offered next year. Um, and maybe canvas by phone uh, since okay. uh, since uh, time is of the yes. yes, We can do that. Uh, we, can, we can survey <laughs> students. That's just, I mean, I'm all for it. It's no problem. What else? Well, I, I just yeah. uh, wondered about budget. Budget-wise, do you think the budget can handle it? Well, and of course, I, we I'm haven't started the budget right. process yet, but I, I do believe, based on preliminary information, that we probably can. Okay. I'm just wondering if we could make a motion to give a. Uh, uh, Mr. Carter, the authority to go ahead and make that decision on his own after he reviews. I'm fine. I stay behind the poll of the board. I'm fine. And let us vote on that tonight, give him the authority that he thinks is, is a necessary position, and we'll have a pretty good enrollment to go I don't, I don't have place. an issue with that. I'll put that in motion. Okay. Second. The motion second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> On you now, Mr. Sounds like it is. <laughs> okay, consider approval of revised school bus driver application, Mr. Carter. I uh, would like to ask the board to consider approval of the revised application that you have in your packet. This application includes the driver's license number. It updates the school board's address to the new 911 address. It also updates the background check information uh, as far as the amount that it costs to do a background check and who actually pays. Uh, for that uh, background check. It actually also updates the uh, non-discrimination policy at the bottom of the application. So we'd like to ask the board to consider approval. Have a motion to approve? So moved. Have a second? Second. Have a motion second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, next is consider approval of the overnight field trips, Mr. Carter. We have two requests for overnight field trips, both from the Lee Career and Technical Center. Um, one is for the FBLA State Competition in Reston, Virginia. The other one is for the National DECA Conference in Orlando, Florida. I make a motion we approve. So moved. Or er, second. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, we have a motion second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. All right. Uh, next is. Consider approval of the Arab Early Retirement Incentive Plan. One, it's tabled from uh, February the 10th. 
Mr. Chairman, um, I've asked Mr. Hobbs, he, he looked at our ERIP plan that we had approved last year, which was formerly Plan 13, and we changed to Plan 11 because it was the only plan that was approved last year, and Mr. Hobbs has made some recommendations as far as the language that's in the, the policy, and I've asked him if he will address the board with that. Thank you, Mr. Carter. Good evening, Mr. Chadwell, members of the board. I think you have in your packet a revised ERIP Plan 1 document. It's a two-page document, and largely what we've done with it is we've drawn from former Plan 13, which has been renumbered, I think it was renumbered in last year's it was. adoption. I've also taken a look at policies, early retirement policies throughout the Commonwealth. And a number of school systems, in fact, have phased out the early retirement plans. And after speaking to the legal counsel for those boards about their concerns and looking at the plans of others, I've made some, some suggested changes here. Uh, one, and probably the most important, most substantive change, is simply to strengthen the school board's legal position uh, with respect to, to enforcing uh, the 90-day the work rule, but to provide at the same time flexibility for the board to allow the superintendent to negotiate <coughs> with retirees to allow them to work fewer hours, fewer days rather, fewer than the 90 days in exchange for a pro rata reduction, if that's what the employee uh, elects. There have also been some changes simply for clarification. Uh, for example, there was a phrase formerly maximum social security age. We've Tweaked that we've clarified that that means the age at which an employee becomes eligible for unreduced Social Security benefits. That, of course, changes, and I, I think right now that age is 66, perhaps 67, depending on the age, the date in which someone, sorry, the year in which someone was born. But that's just just to, to clarify uh, things and remove any, any potential uh, vague language in the agreement. Um, there were also a couple of issues. One. The, the, the most major issue that, that some boards had confronted, and at least one board I believe had eliminated their plan based upon this, I don't think it's I don't think it's a severe concern as, as that school division believed, but there have been school systems in the state that have faced lawsuits over age, uh, age discrimination claims uh, stemming from having to pick and choose which employees could participate. And so the prior plan has had language in it which would have allowed the school board to pick and choose. I think it's a safer option to simply allow the board if there are, if there is excess, if the interest in the plan is beyond the funds that are allocated for the plan, the board simply has the option to not adopt the plan or not implement the plan for that year rather than getting a position where the board has to pick and choose and potentially uh, face a claim as, as other school systems have. Be glad to answer any questions about the plan. Do you want to have questions? One, one other clarification of uh, the, the, the amount of the local health supplement. I have inserted language simply reciting that that is, shall be equivalent to the percentage of health insurance costs that the school board pays for its full-time employees during a given contractual year. So it's not a set dollar amount. It obviously fluctuates. With, with the cost of health insurance. So, I don't have a question. I'm ready to make a motion. Okay. We have a motion to approve uh, Eric Plan Number One. I make a motion that we approve. Okay. We have a motion. Have a second. Second. Have a motion. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Hawk. Thank you. Okay, next is uh, to consider approval of payment of bills. Mr. Carter. I'd like to recommend that the board approve payment of bills. Have a motion to pay the bills? So moved. Have a motion, have a second? Second. Have a motion, second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, next is reports and recommendations of the board. Mr. Weed. Uh, I can congratulate Kennedy back here. And uh, I'd like to tell you that I've been all for what she said right there for years. I sure would like to see drama put back in the schools and elected anyway. I think you'd be running over in crisis with it. And uh, I want to tell you, Kennedy, that we, uh, the play that we players is putting on, uh, I voted for it because I had the part picked out for you in the thing there. Oh, I wish no, you, you, you and your mom both. But, uh, <laughs> we, 
we appreciate what you've done and I want to tell you she, all she's doing is acting around a little bit there to get this award. Uh, I'd also like to uh, uh, thank uh, for coming over with uh, Lena Wisco and also like to thank those people who put input into the budget and also into the uh, meeting here tonight at uh, all these things. It's tough to look at this thing and see how many days we got to make up. And I don't think anybody is 100% happy with what we had to vote on, but I certainly am not uh, there, but I did vote on it there. But uh, we'll get through the year somehow or other. That's all, thanks. Thank you, Mr. Whitman. No, sir. Mr. Tweed? Um, yeah, I'd just also like to congratulate, um, I think it's Kennedy? Is it yes, sir. Right? And, uh, you know, wish you the best. And I agree with you 100%. Of course, you know, I'm an avid supporter of the fine arts. Uh, I guess you could say that. And um, I don't see any reason in the world why they shouldn't have drama at your school. Just go talk to your principal and get enough interest, and hopefully a teacher will have a free period that they'd be able to do that and work that out. I think that would be a good idea. I mean, as an elective. Um, so maybe you can initiate that. But uh, I think that would be, I, I just think the, the more fine arts you have, I think the more well-rounded the students are and, and studies have proven that students involved in fine arts do a lot better in test and stuff. But uh, congratulations to you. Um, also, um, I was, uh, wanted to mention, you know, I'm very happy about the state wanting the teachers to have a 1.5% raise and I think that's wonderful I just wish they wouldn't give us a percentage all the time because I, like I said before when you do those percentages it just widens the gap from the lowest salary scale to the top and I'm, I'm hoping there's some flexibility in there that we can work in within the numbers if the state's going to go along with that and see what we can do and also Mr. Carter I'm just wondering, are we in panic mode yet because of our attendance? <laughs> no, not really. I mean, our attendance, our enrollment, I'm sorry. No, no, we're not in we're panic mode We're still in pretty good shape. We, we think we'll be okay. <coughs> well, then I'll feel much I'll, better. I'll ask Ms. Lander for her. <laughs> and I'll yield to Ms. Jesse. Then. <coughs> Mr. Chair will have to yield him. Well, so he can. Uh, uh, I'll join uh, Mr. Williams and Mr. Twig about congratulating you, Kennedy. Wish, you. wish you well. Uh, that I would, well, I better not say that too, too loudly that uh, I, you're a sure shot making the governor's school, but uh, get, given your performance so far, I think you, you'll probably do well. Um, Ms. Adams, how many spellers will be going to Knoxville on Saturday? Do you know? One is all that I just, know. Just one. Well, and I wish him well also uh, in that feat. Hope he comes wet back at winter. And uh, for all those that made the comment that they would like one good snow, next time I hope maybe you put a little parameters on that about the amount and or the days missed. And I will admit I was one of those. Yes, I'll smack myself. Elsa. And somebody else will. I'll, I'll move over. So I said it was Elsa. Oh, Elsa. Oh, okay. Yeah, you have people praying for snow dance, doing snow dance, and then they're praying for it to stop. I will also would like to commend you, uh, Miss Ray, and tell your mom I'm mad at her because she didn't come tonight. Oh, okay. Congratulations. Okay, next uh, is uh, Mr. Harbor, who's going to lead us into executive session. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I move we go to executive closed session to consider personnel section 2.2-3711A1 and pending litigation section 2.2-3711A7 of the Code of Virginia to discuss personnel and pending litigation. Did I have a second? Second. I have a motion second. All in favor say aye. 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 